Hi, I'm Ben Funk and you're watching Hot Hardware. Today we're going to look at image quality and performance using F1 2021 from EA Sports. When this game shipped in July, it supported hardware accelerated ray tracing and NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling or DLSS. In October, this game also picked up support for AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR. So today we can look at a game that supports both DLSS and FSR with ray tracing and look at image quality and performance using NVIDIA's iCAT image quality analysis tool. Today we're testing on an MSI GE76 Raider which has an Intel Core i9 processor and a GeForce RTX 3080 mobile GPU. So this is the top of the heap. We're capturing video directly out of the HDMI in the GE76 Raider on an Avermedia Live Gamer 4K so that the GPU does not have to do encoding as well as playing the game so that we don't affect performance. Let's take a look at our in-game settings. For our video mode, we're outputting at the laptop's native 1080p. Remember the GE76 Raider has an impressive 360 hertz 1080p display and we're getting the most out of it here. We're using a variety of different image quality settings for anti-aliasing. We're using the off mode, which is just native 1080p. We're using DLSS at its quality preset. We're using native 1080p rendering with TAA and Fidelity FX image sharpening. And then finally, we're using FSR. Unfortunately, when FSR was added to this game, it doesn't support different quality modes. So we're using only the quality version here because that's what the game supports. And we're using the quality version of DLSS as a comparison point. For image quality, we're using the ultra high preset and then we've turned on ray tracing and cranked those to the highest as well. This is the ultimate in image quality supported by F1 2021 and it really shouldn't cause any problems for the GeForce RTX 3080 mobile GPU or the Intel Core i9 processor. F1 2021 re-simulates the race in every benchmark run. So we have tried to limit the number of variables in our runs. We're using the Bahrain track. We're using a clear, dry day, actually night, we're under the lights. The camera mode is always locked to the far chase view. We're running it for one lap, which takes about a minute and a half. And we're showing our FPS counter and we're not looping the benchmark. With all that out of the way, let's get to the comparisons. On the left we have native 1080p rendering with no anti-aliasing and on the right we have 1080p again but this time we've added uh, TAA and Fidelity FX image sharpening. Uh, this is the highest quality image quality for any given resolution in F121 uh, so it makes sense to compare our other anti-aliasing methods to that. But first we want to see where we got started. Uh, the first thing that really strikes me, especially if we zoom in, we get into about 200% here, is just how jagged the car on the left looks it, with native resolution, uh, native rendering, no AA. Uh, you can see that the, the textures really shimmer both on the, ca on the car's tires and on, especially on the car itself. Uh, the spoiler has a lot of uh, creepy crawly pixels moving left to right and the, the shimmering in the textures is just really, really off-putting. On the right, uh, it's so much smoother. Yeah, the car is a different color because the game re-simulates with every benchmark run, but it also looks so much smoother. And you can see it also in these starting positions as we go along the pavement. On the left, it was so jagged, when on the right, they were so much smoother. The other thing we can see as we look into the, the detailed areas is, again, the cars... Uh, our opponents still look pretty jagged. The textures in the background, the white lines especially, still look pretty rough. They're just begging for some sort of anti-aliasing, and so we're giving that to them uh, with TAA. It's a total po uh, post-process effect. Uh, it should be pretty light on performance penalties, but it's, it's almost necessary. This kind of jagged image is immediately obvious on the, the laptop's 1080p display. Uh, remember we're using an MSI GE76 Raider. 
Uh, so this mobile G, uh, GeForce RTX 3080 really could use uh, some, uh, some anti-aliasing. When we look at performance, we see the average was almost 100 without AA, uh, 99. But it was actually 101 uh, with the uh, TAA and, and image sharpening enabled. That doesn't mean it's actually faster, but remember, the game is re-simulating. So there's a little bit of a margin of error. Uh, so we're seeing basically the same performance. Uh, adding Fidelity FX sharpening is free image quality improvement without an impediment at all on our performance. All right, now we're looking at, again, TAA and Fidelity FX sharpening at 1080p, but this time we're going up against uh, DLSS 2 uh, from NVIDIA. So this time, remember, DLSS is using a slightly lower resolution image depending on the preset you select, and we selected the quality preset. So we're seeing the best that DLSS has to offer against the native rendering. The first thing that really jumps out at me is these tires. On the left, uh, TAA and uh, Fidelity FX sharpening, it just it's nice and smooth. Uh, but on the right, you see it flicker. The, the tops of both tires actually uh, on the on the right flicker and that's because DLSS is using multiple frames of data trying to figure out exactly how those tires should be drawn and sometimes it just whiffs um, it's pretty distracting on the laptop itself and it's super obvious when we when we zoom in when we zoom in doesn't really matter but if you're using a a, a larger 1080p gaming display you're really gonna see this so it, it isn't really the best. Uh, however, whether that's an issue is completely up to you. And the rest of the game still looks pretty good. If you're looking at the, the textures on the road, the white lines, the white and red repeating shoulder of the road, those all look pretty darn good. Uh, the, the background looks great. The textures are still pretty sharp. And outside of these tires, which are obvious on all of the opponent cars as well. It's really not obvious that we're using a lower resolution image. We're coming up on the end here, and so we'll see how the performance is in the game once we get to that screen here. All right, so again, on the left with TAA enabled, we were at 101 FPS. And with DLSS, we get about 13% uh, extra frames, or uh, an FPS average of 114. More importantly, the minimum FPS, 87 versus 97, we get a big jump in the minimum frames per second, which gives a smoother frame rate overall with a, a higher valley, which results in, in a smoother, more responsive game. All right, so for our next comparison, we still have TAA and Fidelity FX image sharpening against AMD's FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. This is an upscaler, just like DLSS, but it's cross-platform and it runs as a, a shader library that's open source and available for any platform. So we will again uh, zoom in on our image here, and we're just gonna compare the differences. The first thing that I wanna point out is that the tires uh, remember in DLSS, the tires were flickering because it was adding rows of pixels and taking them away quickly. That doesn't happen with FSR, although we are seeing a little bit of a uh, uh, flicker in the, in the tires. It's not nearly as pronounced as it is uh, with DLSS. So if we uh, look at the cars in front of us, we can see they're pretty smooth. I think we're starting to lose a little bit of detail especially in this Aston Martin on the right. Bring this over a little bit. You can start to see in the spoiler that there are little rows of flickering pixels. That's not exactly obvious when we're playing on the displays uh, built in, or the laptop's built-in display, but it's a little, a little odd, uh, and it can occasionally catch your eye. Now, as we go through these starting points, they're nice and smooth, just like they were before uh, with DLSS. The background is pretty sharp uh, without losing a ton of detail, although you can start to see, again, 
a little bit of the the white uh, the white lines start to separate at steep angles uh, just like you did at the native resolution against native uh, resolution and anti-aliasing we don't exactly have uh, the same image quality although it's it's not bad uh, the the issues that appear here in FSR are more frequent they affect more of the screen but they're not as obvious uh, not as severe as they are in uh, DLSS and when we look at performance here uh, again a reminder 101 FPS native with uh, anti-aliasing on 112 FPS or just over an 11 per, or just under an 11 percent jump uh, in performance again minimum FPS is up quite a bit so it's just a tad slower than DLSS at the same resolution the image quality is impacted in a different way than DLSS is obviously we're still gonna hold up native resolution as the as the ultimate neither one of them look bad if we're really honest what's unfortunate is that FSR is only available at a single setting in this game all right, let's jump into our final comparison. This is uh, DLSS versus FSR. We have FSR on the left and DLSS on the right, although partway through we'll swap them so we can see uh, differences in both. Uh, let's get this party started. We'll zoom in and start our race. So right off the bat, uh, again, those tires in FSR look fine there's a little bit of flicker to them but it's not super way out there uh, versus DLSS it's looking pretty rough uh, and because DLSS was on the right before we'll swap them uh, and that's gonna make our video player really angry uh, but now that DLSS is on the left we see that the same issue uh, occurs with those tires so it affects the entire car it affects our competitors and so on uh, if we quit looking at the car and start looking at the background, we can see that the the white lines uh, on DLSS just connect better at steep uh, turning angles as opposed to on FSR. There's just no two ways about it. You can see that the, the uh, texture gets separated. That line gets separated uh, on the right with FSR. And then on the left... Uh, you can see it here as we come into that. That was all nicely connected like it should be. Uh, when we get to the starting positions, they all look pretty good. There's no problems there. Um, but there's a, there is definitely a difference uh, between the two with their lines. And then lastly, uh, we can see that uh, farther down the track, everything is still nice and sharp. You know, neither of these are doing a native image to start with so it has they have less detail than uh, native uh, rendering or native with anti-aliasing uh, but they're doing a pretty good both doing a fairly decent job of putting back details that are missing uh, we definitely prefer both of these either of these to rendering at just a lower resolution like we wouldn't play this game at 1600 by 900 if we had to uh, we'd much rather uh, let DLSS or FSR do the work for us. And then in terms of performance, we already know how this is going to turn out because we've already seen both of them. But uh, DLSS was uh, an average of 114 with a 97 FPS low versus 112 and 95. Uh, pretty close together. Um, we can't really say that one is faster than the other just based on this comparison because the game re-simulates the race every time. Honestly, this isn't the result we expected. NVIDIA's claim is that at equal image quality, DLSS is faster than FSR. And for the same performance, DLSS actually looks better. The latter does seem to be true to an extent. For the most part, DLSS looks better than FSR, especially in the environment. Uh, the white lines that get jagged on the road get smoothed out. We have smooth curves and the stands and the environment just look really good. It's just the car itself that looks strange, but what's going on is so jarring that it's hard to say that DLSS looks better overall. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different, and performance isn't really any different either. So what version of DLSS does F1 2021 use? 
In the latest version of the game, the DLL included is version 2.2.9.0. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, Ben, 2.2.9.0 is not 2.3, and that's correct. It's common knowledge in gaming subreddits. You can just swap out the file, the DLSS library, in a game with a newer version and take advantage of the newer algorithms. So we did that. We downloaded Doom Eternal and copied the DLSS library, which is version 2.3.0, from its installation folder into F1 2021s and reran the benchmark. So what happened? Not not much. As you can see here, it doesn't really look any better. The tires are still wobbling like they're going to fall off the car, and the rest of the environment still looks pretty good. Performance isn't any better or worse either. The benchmark ended at 115 frames per second. That's exactly one FPS faster than the previous run. It does seem that maybe DLSS has the slimmest of leads over FSR in this game, but it's not something we can feel. Still, we know that DLSS and FSR will continue to improve over time, and image quality and performance will both get better. We hope you've enjoyed this image quality comparison and performance analysis of F1 2021 using native rendering, DLSS, and FSR. If we've learned anything, it's that FSR and DLSS are both really great technologies, but they're not perfect. Image quality is not exactly 100% up to native, and that's okay, because they bring along with them a performance increase. They still look better than they would just running the game at a lower resolution or lower settings, so we take them all as a win. On the other hand, if our hardware can support it, we're going to try to bypass both of those technologies. We would much rather run at a native resolution and add anti-aliasing as performance allows. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to the channel so you can be notified when new content goes live. Once again, I'm Ben Funk, and this has been Hot Hardware.